Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel ESP, I'm Daniela and for today's video I will be showing you guys how I was able to reach a mid-back level for my natural hair. Now I've been natural since middle school. I was inspired by my best friend who has been natural her entire life and at the time I had a perm, a really bad perm at that and for the longest my hair would only go to like this length like where my natural hair is right now in its kinky state it would literally just stay at this length right here but now it's like all the way bra level really so yeah in this video i will be showing you guys what i was able to do what products worked for my uh, 4c natural hair and hopefully it works for you too on your hair journey Now, some of you who may be watching this video uh, may be wanting to go natural and however you're dealing with a household of where some people may be kind of against you going natural so what I have to say to that is that you are your own person this is your own hair um, being natural is not easy it's going to be really discouraging at points like when you first transition to going natural um a lot of times you're just going to feel like giving up because the natural hair care products have gotten a lot more expensive lately and it can be discouraging especially in the beginning having to deal with your natural hair texture for the first time ever and learning how to detangle it and take care of it and use totally different products from what you used before when you have like a perm or whatever but I encourage you to keep it going. YouTube is so educational when it comes to black hair. All of what I've learned from my natural hair journey has come from YouTube and I thank all of these wonderful, beautiful YouTubers for teaching me to love myself when society didn't allow me to do that. So, um, oh, I got a bit emotional. So the first tip that I have that I just want to get out of the way, I know it sounds very generic, but drink water. Like I used to be the type of person who didn't drink much of any water. I would just uh, drink soda or coffee or juice all the time. But once I started drinking water a lot more these past two years, I really started to see the difference in my hair and not only drinking water, also treat your hair as if it were a plant. Plants need to be watered like every single day. So what I like to do is I just use a spray bottle that I got from like the beauty supply or you can even get this from Walmart for like 80 cents to a dollar and I just spray it all around my hair. Now some people they like to mix other things in here like conditioner or hair oils. I sometimes do that but for now I just have water in here and then I like to apply the oil externally on its own. The next tip I have is to wear protective hairstyles. I am someone who is always seen in protective hairstyles. I'm always wearing braids, twists, or I might have a sew-in. I haven't had a sew-in lately, but I just got out of having a crochet hairstyle and now I'm starting to wear wigs and I'm loving it because they're wigs. You can take them off at the end of the day and you can feel your own real hair. It's really refreshing. So yeah, wear the right protective hairstyles for you and for me, I typically keep my protective hairstyles in for around two to maybe three months, more so like two, two and a half months. Because if your protective hairstyle isn't in for long enough for like maybe a couple of weeks, you're not really allowing your hair to grow as much as it should. And then if your protective hairstyle is in too long, then you're probably going to see a lot of hair damage and hair loss. So yeah, try and keep your protective hairstyles, braids, sew-ins, cornrows, whatever it is, in for about two, two and a half months. Okay, so the next tip. So when it comes to washing my hair, these are the products I use. I typically try and go for a sulfate free uh, product and I don't really shampoo my hair. I like to co-wash. And the one that I'm using right now is the Bella Curls Coconut Cream Co-Wash. And it's working really good actually. I really like the texture. It's like not too thick, not too soft. It's like right in between. And then this, this one right here <sighs> see like when I detangle my hair in the shower it gets really tangled like you know those one strand knots 
I hate those like for this with this product it really helps prevent that from happening it works really well it's called a Pantene leave-on detangling milk normally I am kind of skeptical of Pantene I felt like I felt like in the past uh, Pantene and their hair products weren't so much catered towards uh, black hair in particular type 4 hair but this product actually works really good and I was pleasantly surprised so I recommend now as far as conditioner, I use one of two things. When I'm washing my hair in the shower, I use the As I Am Coconut Co-Wash Cleansing Conditioner. And then on like a daily basis when I'm needing more moisture for my hair, I use this off-brand um, conditioner that I got from Walmart. It actually works very good. Surprisingly, I like you guys should not look down on off-brand products because a lot of times the off-brand hair products or the off-brand feminine products are made by the exact same company it's just different labeling but more products in the bottle so yeah look into that now I know that a lot of us 4c type 4 hair black people uh, we have a lot of trouble with shrinkage so this product the all-natural anti-shrinkage by dark and lovely I use this immediately after I get out the shower and I start sectioning off my hair um, twisting it, tangling it and everything and I just spray it down each one of the twists that I have set up and then in the morning when most of it is already dry but some of it is still a bit damp I use my blow dryer and I grab each individual twist that I have and just use the blow dryer as I pull it to prevent even more shrinkage from happening. So when I'm sectioning off my hair in the shower, I like to separate my hair into like six sections. My hair is really thick and full as you can see. So what I do is that I either use like those big hair clips or I just quickly twist them. And then once I'm out of the shower and at my sink again, I take each one of those sections and then make them into three or four sections depending on how thick it is. So when I'm doing a twist out, I use the Bella Curls Curl Defining Cream and I mix it with the Extreme Wet Line Styling Gel. It actually works very good for uh, 4C hair. Now I probably should have got a smaller container of it, but um, yeah, because I barely have my natural hair out. But yeah, this is how the results look on my hair. And when I take down my twist, I use an oil. You can use any oil really, but I like to use this one because it's vanilla scented. And I just rub it throughout each section until I'm satisfied. And the key to keeping the curl pattern and not having it to frizz is to kind of feel for where the curls are taking place because if you separate the parts of where it's starting to frizz up, then all of that effort from the twist out will just be, will just go to waste, you know. And then I take my blow dryer with my comb and I just kind of pick it out so that there's less shrinkage and so it's more full. Gorilla Snot works actually very well for 4C hair and I don't even have to like use a scarf or a bandana. All I have to do is like apply it and it stays on literally all day. And when I'm on the go or I'm at someone's house, I like to use these travel size. They actually now sell travel size natural hair care products, which is really great. Okay, so the next tip that I have is do not, I repeat, do not put heat on your hair. I used to be the type of person who would put heat on my hair maybe once a month or several times a month and that was a time of when I wasn't seeing much of any growth and that was the reason because I was putting heat on my hair too often and like if you're someone who has a sew-in and you know with sew-ins most of them um, have like the leave out and then you have to flat iron it to make it blend with the fake hair I recommend doing wigs instead wigs are a lot more I don't know, I just like wigs better. I prefer wigs. Sew-ins are overrated. And that's just me. And plus the great thing about wigs in comparison to like sew-ins is that you can allow for your hair to breathe. With sew-ins you may have like the cap underneath all the hair and that prevents your hair from getting the proper moisture and nutrients that it needs on a day-to-day -day basis and of course it also affects how thoroughly you're able to wash your hair when it's time to be washed. However, I will say that blow drying your hair is safe even though it's still heat 
uh, but what I want to say about fat is that excessive blow drying can be damaging like blow drying your hair so much so it can be you know basically straightened the only time I really blow dry my hair is when I have like twist or protective style and it's not drying enough and I have somewhere to be that's when I use a blow dryer normally I just let it air dry if you're someone who's in the beginning process of going natural um, I recommend mainly doing protective hairstyles like braids twists um, whatever else and if you are going to straighten your hair try your best to limit it to like only once a year or maybe twice a year see normally with my hair every year it grows about two inches but that was back when I would get like silk presses maybe two or three times a year like during the holidays or whatever however this past year alone I only had my hair straightened like once and I was seeing four to five inches of growth so it really does make a difference not putting excessive amounts of heat on your hair to make it bone straight and yeah just don't put heat on your hair if you want it to grow faster the next tip that I have is that when you have protective styles do not get lazy with your hair I feel like a lot of times with us when we have like braids or twists or whatever else we kind of get lazy you know because our hair is already styled so we don't feel as much of a need to moisturize it and oil it on a day-to-day -day basis however it is really important that you do that so it promotes growth and healthy hair and less breakage now when it comes to detangling your hair your number one best tool is your fingers and your second best tool is a wide tooth comb I rarely use um, those rat tail combs because I tend to see a lot more breakage a lot more hair loss okay so the next tip is of course to eat healthier um, when I was in high school when I got back home from school there wasn't really much to eat I mean we weren't like poor or anything it's just no one really cared to get groceries like that so I would just eat like grilled cheese hot dogs you know microwave kind of food however once I got to college and I'm on my meal plan I have been eating so healthy here like I have vegetables protein fruits every single meal and I think that's really making a difference with my hair because it's growing faster and longer it's less brittle um, it's just overall all better because I changed my eating habits. And another thing I wanna say is that exercise really does help when it comes to growing your hair because you're getting more blood circulation in your body. And I guess the science says that that also helps grow your hair, I'm not too sure. But ever since I started exercising with my friends, I go like once or twice a week to the gym on campus, I have really been seeing a difference in my hair and my overall lifestyle in general. Now this next tip that I have isn't so much related to hair growth, but it's more so about keeping your skin um, from breaking out. Because the reality is, is that with these hair products, when they touch your face, especially for me, I just break out like throughout like the perimeter of my face. So what I like to do, if I know that I'm going to have a certain portion of my hair that's going to be in my face, like this part here, I will put like less products there, less oils there, but I'll mainly concentrate on the back side because that's not the part that's touching my face. So yeah, ever since I started doing that, I noticed that anytime I have my natural hair out, I have less um, pimples around my face. Okay, so the last tip that I have for you guys is kind of different from what I've heard from other YouTubers, but really pay attention to your mental health. For me, I have had depression ever since I was like eight or nine years old. It started really early because of certain reasons, certain insecurities and everything, and they just kind of and it just kind of stayed with me. But um, but yeah, this past year I really did make an effort to heal myself internally first. Um, I'm gonna make a video about this, about how I was able to well not necessarily cure my depression, but like slowly heal it it is a lot less severe than it was last semester last semester i was in a really really low place but this semester i'm going out more i'm eating healthier i'm hanging out with friends more and i've really seen the difference in my overall lifestyle and that has also helped with my hair i would say because your mental health affects your physical health and a part of your physical health is how healthy your hair is growing in every other part of your body you know so 
so yeah i'm gonna make a video about that about how i was able to reach my goals and cure my depression it's not cured but you know what i mean anyways that's all that i have for today's video thanks so much for watching please do like and subscribe to my channel and share this video with others who are wanting to go on their natural hair journey and watch my other videos and i'll see you on the next one that i mentioned earlier bye